If you watch this channel regularly, you know how I feel about some of the albums that have come out this year. You know how I feel about Randy Hauser's Magnolia. You know how I feel about Charles Wesley Godwin. You know how I feel about Emily Scott Robinson. You know how I feel about Flatland Cavalry. But uh, John Party just came in here with an album of the year contender, and now I feel like your move, Luke Combs, or your move, Cody Jinks. Let's see if anyone can top this, because John Party just dropped an awesome album. Another dance to a country song. Now, in case you're unfamiliar, John Party is our California boy in country music. He hails from California, and he's always brought this kind of Bakersfield vibe over to Nashville. He's had a sort of slow rise over the past decade in country music. He had a breakout hit called Up All Night. Baby, let's go take a dirt road, kick it back, fight again. In 2013, I actually included Up All Night in my original viral video, Why Country Music Was Awful in 2013. And John Party is the only person I ever heard from that was included in that video. And he said, you gotta check out my other music. I don't feel like you understand me. And let me tell you, the guy was right. I didn't understand him. As time went on and as California Sunrise came out and I was like, oh, you're trying to fuse this old school sound with this kind of new school percussion sometimes and really bring almost this Texas dance floor style to the California Bakersfield super fiddly steel driven sound. I started to realize I really had John Party wrong and John Party is amazing. California Sunrise in 2015 really became the breakout moment for John Party with songs like Head Over Boots and Heartache on the Dance Floor and She Ain't In It, which deserved to be a bigger hit. Don't wanna hear her name, I don't wanna and John Party really started to represent this sort of reaction to the over broification, over popification of country music. He was like a course corrective that was talented and more traditional in both his sound and aesthetic than other country stars and really wanted us to harken back to quality songwriting and real instrumentation. And after California Sunrise became this dark horse giant hit, John Party was exactly at the point in his career where he could really broaden his audience. He could go way poppier in his sound. He could start to maybe collaborate with some people in the EDM world since all the boundaries are coming down. And that's just not how John Party reacted. Instead, he's doubled down on the country music sound. Every song that has been releasing from this album thus far has been filled with fiddle and steel really prominently. Uh, has had the guitar turned way up with some super twang on it. And it's kind of had us country fans sitting back saying, is he about to do this? Is he about to drop a big old traditional country record that somehow feels fresh and cool and new? And guess what? Yeah, he was. And he did. And it's awesome. So let's talk about it. And here I go again. I'm drinking one. I'm drinking two. The first single from this album is called Heartache Medication. And that's also the name of the album. And I think it's a good name for the album because this is a disc that is about both heartache. There's a lot of breakups and sad songs and medication or alcohol in this case because there's a ton of drinking songs on this record too. There's some that make you feel good. There's some where he's wallowing in the sadness and uh, that kind of interplay is what drives the whole record. Now just like on Heartache Medication on all the other pre-release tracks where we were hearing a ton of fiddle, this is courtesy of a woman named Janae Fleener who is actually the first woman ever nominated for the Instrumentalist of the Year at the CMA Awards this year. And this album is such a showcase for her too. And if you're someone that loves the fiddle, every song is punctuated by gorgeous fiddling on this record. And then there's all this steel that is super turned up and adds a crazy ambiance to so much of this record. You feel kind of this melancholy feeling from the steel sometimes and this little bit of wonder and then you feel a little joy and like mischief and loneliness sometimes from the fiddling and then you got the guitar which uh, my buddy Nathan was telling me he's like yeah it just reminds me of Buck Owens turned all the way up and so twangy and I agree with him completely the vibe of this record is just rapturous sometimes the music is so nice to listen to you turn this on and you're just like the sound of this is great the sound of this is so cool and it sounds expensive. There's a lot of country guys and gals that are bringing real quality from the indie scene, from the alt scene, but this is a big old Nashville production where they could afford 
a lot of players on every song and let me tell you it's beautiful to hear and if there is a theme on this record other than the heartache and other than the drinking i would say it's definitely this hearkening back to tradition the opening song is a song called old hat which was co-written by jeff hyde who's in eric church's band when did old become so out of fashion? and john party kind of throws down the gauntlet on this song where he says you can bet your ass there's a lot of us old cats wearing old boots and old hat that ain't ready to give old hat the boot. And if you didn't know, old hat is kind of an expression meaning kind of an old school way of doing things. This same kind of old school theme comes up later on the album on a song called Call Me Country. Country boy survival. Which is like a protest song that is functioning more as a tribute song almost. But John Party is name dropping his heroes kind of out of the outlaw movement, Merle and Willie and Hank and Waylon. And he's kind of lacing in song titles all through the record. It actually a little bit reminds me of Hardy on his song Redneck Tendencies, but this is going back to the 70s instead of just going back to the 90s. And we're getting references to Fight Inside of Me by Merle Haggard and Country Boy Can Survive by Hank Williams Jr. And probably a few that are going right over my head. But it's cool because John Party's basically claiming like, I love this music. I I am old school and yet he's doing it without being so combative he's not really trashing anybody in doing so and cowboys and outlaws. speaking of call me country i feel like this is a good time to praise the sequencing on this record because there are so many moments where one song flows right into another song and the themes fit perfectly. Like on Call Me Country, when we're already thrown back into the old school, that's followed up with another song called Just Like Old Times. It's about kind of um, reminiscing about the good times in a relationship. There's that kind of backwards looking theme that connects the two songs. That happens all over this record. Nobody leaves a girl like that. Track three of the album is called Nobody Leaves a Girl Like That, and it's about how like, you don't leave a girl this great. Well, the very next song is about a girl leaving. So in fact, he doesn't leave a girl like that. Yeah, the girl leaves and it's called Ain't Always the Cowboy. This is a clear reference to George Strait with the cowboy rides away because the chorus says, it ain't always the cowboy that rides away. In other words, sometimes it's the girl that wants space. That is a melancholy, beautiful track. Oh my gosh, this whole album is beautiful. I feel like there is so many emotions captured in this record, and yet it's still pretty consistent. He has this big party track called Me and Jack, and it's how like him and Jack Daniels got to be too good of friends, but now they don't hang out anymore. And the whole thing turns into this frenzy. I read a, a thing by Julie Height, who called it a bee swarm at the end of all of these instrumental solos, and it's going wild and raucous. <laughs> feels like a party and it's so thrilling to listen to. Well, that song flows right into a, a duet with Lauren Elena that was actually co-written by Eric Church and Miranda Lambert called Don't Blame It on Whiskey. So again, you get this great kind of thematics of this song about drinking too much. The very next song is Don't Blame It on Whiskey. Like, let's get to the bottom of our relationship, not just the bottom of a glass. But don't blame it on whiskey. Now this ain't I think Lauren sounds amazing on it. I, I think Bart Butler should always produce her because her voice is captured with such clarity. It's such a melancholy, beautiful song. As they say in the chorus, this heartbreak train is picking up steam and we're standing on the tracks. Other times on this record, we're not feeling melancholy at all. Heartache Medication is a really effervescent song, uh, but it's kind of laced in melancholy. Other times, it's just straight up fun, like on Tequila Little Time. Tequila Little Time, definitely the poppiest track on here. We got almost this mariachi sound and horns on it, but that song is freaking irresistible. If you tell me you listen to this album and you don't walk around just singing, I want to kill a little time with you, you're lying because that clap's not even there. You just want to do it because that song is so freaking catchy. That is to me a brilliant lyric. I think it was a Rhett Aikens lyric. Let me look at the writer really quick. Yeah, Luke Laird, love him, Rhett Aikens and John Party. But that little phrase, I want to keel a little time with you, so brilliant. So brilliant and stupid in the most fun way. And that song is going to be a concert favorite for his entire career. There's some people that are like, oh, it's a little too poppy. Shut up, this album is not too poppy. Um, <laughs> I stand, I stand this album. That said, if I do have a criticism here of the album, it's that I just think it's a little bit too long. It's 14 songs, about 49 minutes, and I think we could cut out one or two songs that are perfectly fine, like 
that that kind of middle section, the party section of the album with Tide One On and Ought to Know That and Buy That Man a Beer, it's fun, but there's just, it goes on a little too long. If you cut one or two of those songs, um, I feel like you could have a way tighter album. But that's a pretty minor criticism because overall, I think it is just so pleasing to listen to. I love what it represents. Even more than this album is heartache medication, I feel like it's music industry medication because when you hear what great music sounds like and how lush and beautiful and exciting and uh, full of feelings and, and even simple the country music sound can be, you're just like, wow. I've been settling for some overprocessed stuff, and this album is just a beautiful reminder of how great country music can be. And to me, it's going to be this sort of historic album, unless I'm mistaken, that it will really represent kind of the pendulum swinging back, uh, this new neo traditionalist movement that's happening, you know, 30 years after the last one. I feel like country got way weird and kind of lost sight of itself and now John Party is bringing it back with a bunch of other guys that I've covered on this channel like you know Midland and Riley Green and Luke Combs and a lot of people have been telling me lately dude you're giving a bunch of sevens your your reviews are very much like in the middle and that's because I feel like we've had some glimpses of this new traditional sound that I like and they've there's been a lot of solid albums but has there been a great album that is mainstream this year uh, yeah, it just came out and it's called Heartache Medication by John Party. John Party delivers these songs with gusto. The wordplay is clever and fun and interesting all throughout it. Um, you get this kind of real planting of his flag and, and making a statement that he likes a more traditional country sound. You get awesome fiddling and steel playing all throughout it. Now you have party songs and happy songs and you also have breakup songs and sad songs, but this album never feels despairing. This is a good time album. It is nice to listen to, even in its slower moments, even in songs like Ain't Always the Cowboy, even in songs like um, Love Her Like She's Leaving, you don't feel uh, despair. Overall, I think the record feels really bright and hopeful. I love this record. I think you will too. And sure, if you went to the indie scene, you might find something a little more confessional. I get that. I love those songs. But sometimes, especially when it comes to mainstream music, you just want some big moments. And this album is just all of them. I would say my top three are Ain't Always the Cowboy, Tequila Little Time, and then maybe, let's just say Call Me Country. Uh, or maybe even Old Hat. I don't know, guys. I like almost all the songs here. I'm going to give this album like a 9.1 because I feel so strongly that it is just a good time. Right now, it's definitely a contender for album of the year in my book, but man, I'm just like, bravo. Bravo, Bart Butler. Bravo, Capital Nashville for putting this thing out. Bravo, all the songwriters involved here. Bravo, John Party. I'm just like, bravo, good work, and thank you. So yeah, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell, do whatever you gotta do. Pour one out for John Party tonight because he did the damn thing. Bye guys.